Welcome to the town of Dillon. Well, at least this Dillon. For a while it used to be under here, and it also used to be in two other places. Confused yet? Let's take it back for a second. The town was first patented on July 26, 1881, and named after a president of the Union Pacific Railroad, Sidney Dillon. At the bottom of the appropriately named Lake Dillon, this sign greeted visitors to a beautiful valley where three rivers came together. In the best of times, Dillon had been a relatively lively town for several years. It had four saloons, a pool hall, two general stores, a drug store, barber shop, two cafes, two hotels, three cabin parks, a service station, a schoolhouse, and a church. Old Dillon also hosted the longest and highest ski jump in the United States for a while. Located just west of Dillon Dam and as the scene of a world's record ski jump set in 1919 by Norwegian Anders Hagen. But times were hard and Dillon's past days as an active trading post, logging center, and even a narrow gauge rail hub were long gone. To top it all off, many people lived on the east side of the mountains, but most of the water flowed to the west. One of these rivers was right along Dillon's main street. From this, it was easy to figure out that Dillon was the ideal location for building a dam, creating a reservoir, and moving the water in the other direction. This wasn't Dillon's first rodeo when it comes to moving, though. The town was originally founded in 1879 as a trading post and stage stop. But when rumor came of a new train depot that would threaten the town's crossroads status, the people of Dillon moved their town to the new location. The trouble was, the rumored depot location was wrong, and in 1883, the town moved again to where the train depot was actually built. It remained there for more than 75 years, until the 1950s when it was moved a third time to its present location. Hence why it was called the town that wouldn't stay put. The third and final move of Dillon was probably the most important of the three. As early as 1907, Denver officials began considering the possibility of building a dam and reservoir in Old Dillon. But how would they get it to flow back east towards Denver? The mountains were in the way and a tunnel would have to be built under them at more than 900 feet deep and over 23 miles long. The Denver Water Board started buying property from Dillon residents, relieving some people because of long overdue tax bills. The tunnel work began in 1942 and was named the Roberts Tunnel after Mr. Harold D. Roberts, a Denver Water Board attorney who helped clear the way for this huge project. Once the tunnel was surveyed, explosives were used to cut the hole. An engineer would mark the bore where the drillers would sink about 46 holes for the dynamite. Each blast would extend the tunnel from 5 to 10 feet. Huge fans would suck out the dust, then be reversed to blow fresh air into the bore where they would remove the muck pile or blasted debris. The tunnel project almost resembled a small town with work areas like a carpenter shop, complete with visiting family members. The work on the tunnel was made from four directions, from either end of the tunnel and out from the middle. This middle access point had a small elevator that would lower workers down 910 feet. Precise engineering allowed the separate bores of the tunnel to connect within inches of it. Tunnel work of this magnitude was hard, dirty, and dangerous. It brought the workers and their families together in lasting friendships. When the project was completed, many moved just down the road, helping create the new town of Silverthorne. From the late 1950s until 1961, the town, the earth, and even the trees were moved to make a reservoir that would impound over a quarter million acre feet of water. That's about 85 billion gallons. To put it more into perspective, it takes about one acre foot of water to support a family of four for a year. So this reservoir could support up to a million people and more at full capacity. It would completely fill in 1964. Explosives were used to prepare Lake Hill for anchoring the west side of the dam. More explosives were used to reach stable bedrock that would anchor the dam, digging down up to 80 feet deep. Drag lines with 150 foot booms and huge buckets were brought in to move gigantic amounts of rock and soil and to rescue vehicles which occasionally ended up in the hole. These drag lines hoisted debris to Euclid dump trucks. These belly dump trucks, known as ukes, were able to haul upwards of a quarter million pounds of rock in one load. A footer covers a series of steel reinforced concrete posts, some submerged 300 feet deep. The cap was then covered with tons of clay, keeping water from seeping under the dam. The work on the tunnel and the dam was well underway in 1959, but not all of Dillon had finished moving yet. Home and business property owners were informed that they must sell and be out by April 1st, 1961. While the last of the commercial buildings were being destroyed, some proprietors simply went elsewhere and reopened their businesses. A few of the more prosperous Dillonites had their homes moved, some to Frisco, Breckenridge, Silverthorne, and some to the new town of Dillon. Ray Hill, a well-known cartographer and Dillonite, moved his house to Labonte Street, right next door to Old Dillon's church. The owner of this older ranch complex wanted his buildings relocated to New Dillon, 
The moving crew convinced them that the structures would never make it intact and to leave them to the firemen. Among the buildings moved were the historic 1883 schoolhouse, which had become the community church in 1910. There was some concern as to whether the structure could make the journey to its new home. The ladies of the church, more properly known as the Dillon Ladies' Aid, convinced the moving crew and the others that it simply had to be done. The church annex was detached to permit the transport of the main building. Lodgepole tree trunks were positioned throughout the interior to prop up the ceiling. The move was interrupted when the steeple couldn't pass beneath a power line. The first thought was to simply remove the steeple. That would not be simple at all. Instead, they decided to dig a ditch. The ditch allowed the church to continue on its journey, but it was too much of a slope for the moving truck to pull. The road grader that dug the trench helped tow the moving truck and the church to its new home. It's backed into its current location on Labonte Avenue in New Dillon and houses the Summit Historical Society. The town site of Old Dillon is beneath the lake. Everything was moved, including the cemetery, or burned. Dillon today is a dynamic year-round community on the defining landmark of Summit County, Lake Dillon.